Are you both going somewhere right now? When I said this, the two looked at me while they smirked, as if they had been waiting for me to ask them that question. We are gonna go travel. My mom and I are going to Guam now. Excuse me? Well then, take care of dad, okay? Bye! As my husband Matthew said this, he grinned, and Matthew and his mother walked out with their suitcases. I was just too stunned at what was happening, so I couldn't move for a while. Oh, Jack, I am so sorry. Then, my father-in-law, Jack, suddenly got up, rolled up his sleeves, and said this. Well then, shall we get started? My name is Kim, and I am 32 years old, working at a company. It's been 10 years now since I graduated from college and started working for the company I began working for. Every day I was busy with work, but I also found it rewarding and I did my best to keep up. And, thanks to my efforts, I am currently in the position of the section manager. I also had a happy event in my personal life. My boyfriend, Matthew, whom I have been going out with for three years, had proposed to me. He and I were classmates in college and have always been friends. We kept in touch by going out for drinks regularly, but it never developed into a romantic relationship right away. But we gradually began to feel comfortable with each other and became aware of each other's feelings bit by bit. And we began to go out. And our relationship progressed smoothly, which led to our marriage. It has now been a year since we got married, and we are very comfortable and happy because we know each other very well. Matthew and I both work, but my husband does his share of the house chores so that it won't be just a huge burden on me, and I am able to balance work and personal life. I was happy that I had found a very good husband. My husband also told me that he was very happy to have married the woman he loved, and I thought we would be able to live a happy married life for a long time. But then, something unexpected happened. When I came home from work, my husband had not returned home yet. I had worked overtime that day, so it was around 9pm or so when I got home. I wondered if my husband was also working overtime, but his job requires relatively little overtime, so he rarely stays late until this late. I became a little concerned and sent a text message to my husband. Then, I received a reply back from Matthew, which made me surprised. He told me that my father-in-law, Jack, had fell. I told him I would go to the hospital immediately, but he said it would be okay because Jack's condition was just now calming down and Jack was sleeping and that my husband was about to leave. As I waited anxiously, my husband returned home a few minutes later. When I asked him about the details, he told me that Jack had fallen down the stairs at home and hit his head hard. He then passed out and was rushed to the hospital. He had a concussion and was in a dangerous condition at one point, but as of now, it seems like the injury is not life-threatening. But my husband did not look happy. Is there something else? Well, it seems that he injured his spinal cord when he fell down, and he's going to have some after-effects because of that. What? It seems like he'll probably need nursing care after he gets out of the hospital. Oh no. Hearing this, I felt sorry for Jack. It must be hard for him to be in such a situation, even though he had just recently retired. So, you know, I was thinking a little bit about something. I'm thinking of moving in with my mom and dad. Huh? I'm worried about mom being on her own. I think that she'll also feel safer if we are around. So that's why I want to live with them. Like that, my husband had asked me to live with his parents. It would certainly be difficult for my mother-in-law, Lucy, to take care of Jack, who can't move freely on his own now. After some consideration, I decided to agree with Matthew to live with his parents. When my husband contacted Lucy about what we decided, she seemed pleased as well. So, we moved into my parents-in-law's house and started living together. Oh, Lucy, it's great to see you. We'll be in your care. It's great to see you too, and welcome in. 
after greeting Lucy, I went to Jack's room. Jack was lying on his bed with only his face turned toward me. Oh, Jack, are you okay? Welcome, Kim. And I'm okay. I'm sorry to make you worried. From now on, Matthew and I will be here, so please don't worry about anything. Oh, thank you. That's very helpful of you both. Jack smiled gently as he said that and greeted me. But it was still painful for him to be in this situation, and he sounded somewhat sad and less energetic than before. Jack was able to leave the hospital with no issues, but he still has to undergo rehabilitation. But even if he continues rehabilitation, the doctors are not sure if he will recover fully. So that's why maybe Jack is also a little concerned and anxious about his future too. I thought to myself that I would need to take care of Jack's mental health as well. Jack, I will support you in any way I can. If you have any problems or any concerns and worries, please feel free to talk to me anytime. When I said this, Jack replied in a slightly more cheerful voice than before, saying, Thank you, that's really reassuring. When I returned from Jack's room to the living room, Lucy called out to me. Oh, Kim, what are you doing? Excuse me? Oh, I was saying hello to Jack. Oh, stop being so lazy. Get on with the cleaning. Huh? Lucy says so as she glared at me with a scary face. I was so startled that I froze. Then, Lucy looked at me and got angry again. What are you doing being lazy? You're so slow at everything. Hurry up and move around. So then, I quickly started to clean up my parents-in-law's house. I didn't even have the time to unpack the things I had brought with me. I had no idea that Lucy was such a scary person. I thought she had been kind to me when she greeted me on our wedding day. But the moment we started living together, she changed her attitude like this. After that, Lucy kept on ordering me and telling me what to do. Cleaning the shower room, the bathtub, and the toilet was a must. She made me do everything from cleaning the room to cooking as well. And Lucy complained to me every time I was cooking. You're so sloppy. I'm hungry. Goodness gracious, did Matthew have to always eat meals like this? Oh, poor Matthew. I couldn't concentrate on cooking because Lucy was always complaining about it non-stop. And when the cooking was finished and everyone was seated at the table, Lucy acted as if she had cooked them all by herself. Oh, I am so sorry to make you wait, Matthew. Eat a lot, okay? There's seconds too if you want them, honey. Thank you, Mom. Matthew, you're working very hard at your job, so you definitely need to eat a lot to build up your strength and energy. Lucy then happily watched Matthew eat. I had never met my parents-in-law when we were dating before my husband and I got married, so I never realized it, but apparently Lucy loves Matthew too much. Perhaps it is because Matthew was her only son, but somehow I get the feeling that she wants her son all to herself. Come to think of it, my husband lived at home with his parents all his life until we got married. I am sure Lucy hates me because she thinks I took her son away from her. It wasn't even my intention to do that, so Lucy thinking that way is a big hassle for me, to be honest. After that, Lucy continued to force me to do house chores and she just kept on bullying me. She even forced me to take care of Jack. When I came home from work, Lucy forced me to prepare dinner, care for Jack, and clean the house, and I was exhausted literally every single day. And on weekends, I had to do whatever Lucy asked me to do all day long. Since I work during the day, I am unable to take care of Jack, but then Lucy insisted that I pay for a helper out of my earnings. And finally, I could no longer stand this kind of terrible treatment from Lucy. So I decided to talk to my husband about it. Hey, uh, you know, about Lucy. She's being really mean to me lately. 
Could you maybe also tell her to take it a little easy for me? When I asked my husband about it, he started to say something I never thought he would say. Why are you blaming mom? Mom is relying on you as my wife to take care of her. I won't allow you to speak bad about my mom. I knew that Lucy really loved Matthew, but I had no idea that my husband was also a mama's boy, always taking on his mom's side. I'm not saying anything bad about Lucy. I'm just saying that even though she relies on me, she asks me to do too many things. Don't you dare think about making everything easy for you. I asked you to support my mom, didn't I? I then got angry and irritated at the fact that my husband was putting all the burden on me. Then you should also help around too. You haven't done a single thing around the house since we moved into this house. You haven't even taken care of your father, have you? When I said this, my husband made an even more unbelievable statement. If I do that, my mom will stop me. What? Mom says it's the wife's job to take care of the house. Husbands work outside the house to earn money. This is her way of thinking, so I decided to follow her way. No way! If you want, I'd even like for you to quit your job and concentrate on the house chores. I absolutely did not want to do that. I don't want to quit my current job because I enjoy it, and I'm being entrusted with various responsibilities, which makes it considerably more rewarding for me. In the end, my husband did not take my side, but on the contrary, he started to be harsh with me since then. Hey, are you doing your chores properly? I hope you're not annoying my mom. Lucy was smiling when she sees my husband being harsh with me. Kim really is a useless wife. Matthew, honey, why don't you just dump this woman? Ha! Huh, you're right. If she's too useless, I'll throw her out sooner or later. I was absolutely mortified when my husband and Lucy said such things to me. How could they say such heartless words to me as if it was a normal thing to do? I went to Jack's room as if to run away from them and concentrate on caring for him. Oh, Kim, I am sorry for my rude wife and my foolish son. We had Matthew when we were both old, so that's why my wife is overly caring for Matthew and spoiled him to who he is today. I'll apologize on behalf of the two. Oh no, it's not your fault, Jack, so please don't worry so much. The only saving grace for me was that Jack was decent. For a while after that, I spent my days taking care of Jack while enduring punishment for my husband and Lucy. It was really tough to be around them both, but still, thinking about Jack, I couldn't take the plunge into divorce right away. Then one day, Lucy and Matthew did something that shocked me. That day was the first day of the new year. I woke up early in the morning and was preparing breakfast. Then, unusually, both Lucy and Matthew woke up early in the morning. Oh, happy new year! You're both up early! When I said this to Lucy, she smiled and said, Well, we have to be up early anyways. I wondered if she and Matthew were going somewhere. It was too much hassle to ask for details, so I proceeded to prepare the meal. Then, I saw my husband and Lucy getting ready and already putting on their coats. I thought I had to confirm this, so I asked them, Are you both going somewhere right now? When I said this, the two looked at me while they smirked, as if they had been waiting for me to ask them that question. We're gonna go travel. My mom and I are going to Guam now. Excuse me? Well then, take care of dad, okay? Bye! As my husband Matthew said this, he grinned, and Matthew and his mother walked out with their suitcases. I was just too stunned at what was happening, so I couldn't move for a while. I never thought that they would leave me and Jack early into the new year and even go on a trip with just the two of them. That was just unacceptable. 
Maybe them leaving was good because it'll be a perfect timing for me. I still have a lot of preparations to do, but I just can't take it anymore. I immediately headed to Jack's room. Oh, Jack, I am so sorry. I have something I need to talk to you about. When I talked to Jack, he looked at me and began to say this. Do you want to divorce Matthew? What? How did you know this? I can tell by the look on your face that you've just had enough, Kim. Don't you worry about me. You go on with your life. Oh, Jack. Anywho, where is Matthew and Lucy? Did they go somewhere out? Well, well, it looks like they went traveling to Guam. Hearing this, Jack was stunned to hear that the two of them had gone on a trip. Then, my father-in-law, Jack, suddenly got up, rolled up his sleeves, and said this. Well then, shall we get started? Huh? J jack how can you get up like that? It's all thanks to the rehabilitation, you know. Just recently, I was able to get up on my own with just my upper body. I wanted to tell earlier, but Kim, you seem to be having a hard time and even if I told Matthew and Lucy, they would probably complain that I shouldn't go to the hospital that much now that I can move a little. So, I was going to tell this only to you when I could move around a little more. I see. This way, even with a wheelchair, I'll be able to move around on my own enough. Well then, let's get prepared as soon as possible. I nodded at Jack and immediately started preparing for the divorce. I got two sets of divorce papers and changed the locks on my in-law's house. And a few days later, Lucy and Matthew came home not knowing what to expect. They didn't seem to open the locks and were trying to force the door open. I had no choice but to unlock the door for them. Hey, what the hell is going on? Why won't the door unlock? I calmly replied to my furious husband and Lucy. Well, that's because I changed the locks. I need to talk to you both, so come to the living room. With their faces turning red, I forced them to come to the living room. Oh, uh, d dad What? How, how are you able to move around in a wheelchair all by yourself? Jack just ignored them and told them to sit there. What the hell were you two thinking? You both just left Kim to do everything, and now you both just went on a trip. I can no longer tolerate both of your selfishness. I'm divorcing you, Lucy, and I'm cutting ties with you, Matthew. Both of you better leave this house instantly. When Jack said this, Lucy and Matthew were quite upset. What? Why must we get a divorce? Y yeah, that's right. Cutting us off is just too much. Be quiet. You two got together and forced Kim to do all the housework and take care of me. And then you complained at her and treated her badly. I will never forgive you both for being that way to Kim. Lucy and Matthew both flinched at Jack's angry voice. So I took the opportunity and opened my mouth. Matthew, you are having an affair, aren't you? My husband looked nervous when I said that. Huh? What bullshit is that? The moment I became suspicious, I immediately had an investigator to check about you. And they took a lot of photos of you being friendly with a woman who's younger and who works at your company. According to what I heard, you're trying to dump me and bring the young woman into this house, huh? I'm not sure, but probably your mom there suggested that idea to you, didn't she? When I said that, both Lucy and Matthew turned completely pale. Most likely, my hypothesis was right on spot. Both of them were so upset after that they couldn't speak properly. Anyway, I'm divorcing you and moving out of this house. I'll definitely claim for alimony from your affair, Matthew, and I'll also claim compensation for the emotional distress I've suffered due to your abusive harassment from you, Lucy. Oh, oh no. Lucy and Matthew were both speechless and slumped to the ground. 
After that, Jack and I successfully divorced our stupid partners. And I was able to get my ex-husband to pay me a hefty amount of alimony. My ex-husband remarried and was caught trying to use the mistress as a convenient housekeeper and was eventually abandoned by her as well. Because Matthew had an affair at work, word spread very quickly within the company and apparently he is being treated very coldly by his colleagues. And plus, since he and I went to the same college, our mutual friends have also abandoned him and he is now living alone paying off his debts. And Lucy, who was also abandoned by Jack, is now living a lonely and poor life alone in a small apartment while working part-time. Since Jack no longer needs to support Lucy, he is living alone at his house using that money towards hiring a helper. Jack has been working hard on his rehabilitation since then, and at this rate, he may be able to walk with a cane bit by bit. I kept in touch regularly with Jack and sent him words of encouragement. In return, Jack has taught me how to behave like a manager at work and we have a good relationship even though Matthew and I are divorced. I will use the advice Jack gave me and continue to work hard at my job. It was the right decision for Kim and Jack to cut off that mama's boy and that mother who was overly loving her son. I'm also glad that Kim had Jack, who is very decent compared to Matthew and Lucy. I hope Kim will continue to work hard, and this time I hope that she will meet a much better man for her. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.